are back with Inga Rubadiri Nyagavyaki. She's a Malawian and has been married to Paul Nyagavyaki for 23 years. They have three children, Paula, Gabriel, and Tiamike. Inga currently works as the operations director with Educate, a non-profit social enterprise. Inga's first daughter, Paula, is a super talented artist, and we want to speak to her about her daughter's journey and what influence she had in helping her daughter discover her gift. Welcome to the show, Inga. Thank you, ladies. Nice being here. Um, happy to be part of the Bump Love session. Uh, uh, Rachel, Rachel knows how I am a shy one for TV, but anything for my daughter, I will do. <laughs> I will do. <laughs> Before you came in in the other session, the ladies had asked me about my children's talents. And I said, when they grow older, you kind of feel like, you know, maybe what you thought was a talent maybe really wasn't. Uh, but since your daughter is older, I wanted to ask, at which point were you able to realize that this is not like a passing phase or anything like that, that this was honestly a gift? Okay. Um, with Paula, she, she, was, she, she was always good with art in school, in, in um, majorly primary, the higher level of primary, and then, um, and it was her favorite subject. So it was something that she naturally was good at, um, but we noticed, we noticed in her secondary, just be, just when she was going, between her O-level and A-level, because in all level, her grades as well, as well at that point, her art was always the highest. Um, and they would have, she would tell us stories because she wasn't in school here, she was in school in Nairobi. So she would just let us know how she'd always use her art to, to either get, uh, do something for the other students or get, um, get someone to give her some of their break, you know, let me paint something for you and you'll give me this. So it was recognized by her classmates, recognized by her teachers. Um, and then in her, in, in her secondary, in her A-level, um, that's when we, her, her art was displayed at school. And we had, because we had seen that she was, it was something that she really liked and would spend time with, we got someone to, to help her at home. We, we started to homeschool our kids 10 years ago. It's not new for us. We're very unconventional kind of parents is when we had someone come home and actually sit with her and for a month. And this, this artist actually then just said, it's been very easy working with her because she naturally is talented. And it was the art that she started to paint that had just shocked us. So with every painting, even as her parents, we look and are amazed just every time she does it, yeah. So it's a continuous uh, surprise, not even surprise, but you're amazed with everything that she does with her paintwork. Wow, and I have seen some of her pieces. They are out of this world. Um, so Inga, some of us on this panel have much younger children and we were talking about our children's gifts earlier and we feel like we are in this experimental phase where oh one day they like music the next they like you know art the next they like sport um was there an experimental phase with paula maybe when she was much younger maybe in her toddler toddler to maybe early teens and what did that look like did you allow her to experiment did you notice anything that she might have liked that was different from art from others i i, I would say no it wasn't a phase of of different things she was like it was always I think she's been that child, that child who knew what she wanted to do, and we were open. We were very, we've been open with our kids in just letting them do what they, what they're interested in doing, um, and and so it's. I I really wouldn't say that she tried one thing and we would say okay try this it was very clear i think i made it easy for us it made it easy for us to then identify that very thing and support 
help in that very area. And that's where I was saying we would bring in these artists who, who just brought out and taught her different techniques and skills. I like that you've also been able to tell us what, um, you know, how you've been able to support her, you know, getting people that are already gifted in yeah. that area to come uh, and help. And I think it's one of the things that we're all struggling with, like, uh-huh, so where do we go? My child likes this, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, my child yeah. likes feeling so what? And it yes. looks like, you know, the best thing, the best place to start is by getting people that are already doing these things to come and help your child. So yes. I, I was, uh, well, you know, we're wondering, you know, one of the things that you said is that you're very unconventional and so you are homeschooling your kids. This might come as an easy answer for you, but maybe you can advise parents. Some of us struggle with the educational side of stuff vis-a-vis uh, -vis our child's talent um how do you find that middle ground like not many of us have the luxury of being unconventional and doing mm -hmm. stuff like the way you've done but okay. like how do you how would you how would you tell us how would you advise us to find that balance between what the world expects i mean you you can't be there and you tell your friends that my child didn't do their exams because they had a race in kenya Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Mm -hmm. They miss PLD. No. Uh -uh. Oh, how, no. you know, so how do you find that? Um, how do you find that balance? Uh, I, I, I would say to parents, be open-minded. Be open-minded. And that's that's a, that's something I think we need not just for our children, but for everything that we're doing. There's a way you can be so closed into things happening the way maybe you grow up, you grew up um, experiencing, do things a certain way. Um, and so being open-minded and allowing, allowing your children to explore, allowing the, the, allowing them to do things that I will tell you, even just homeschooling at that time, 10 years ago, obviously, you, could, you can imagine what we were being told. How can you be homeschooled? Why aren't you back in work? Because I stopped work for, for two years. Um, why, why aren't you back in work? How can you be wasting your time? But it is at that time that I actually saw a lot of how my children learn, what they were able to do, what what I wasn't able to see because I was so busy working and not being present fully. And I know it's not easy for many parents to be available fully, but if you can, kids come to you with something and it's very easy to just shut it down and continue and, and think, oh, this is just some passing phase. Listen, be present, S stop and, and see what it is that they're coming to you with and invest in that. You know, you are the nurturer. You are the one who is going to be the one who can provide anything and everything that they need. Um, and it does a lot of times it doesn't even have to be financial, but just being that uh, present, available person to hear what um, and see what they're doing. You start to see a pattern. You start to see how they light up because of something they have a passion for. Uh, allow them, allow them to be themselves and enjoy that space. So um, I think that's 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 the most I can say. Being open-minded, someone in in Spain saw her work. They usually support Spanish students to go and do an art and travel experience, and they saw her art and said, "I would like to sponsor this child." And so she went to that top university in, in the UC applied. He said, you can go anywhere in the world. Uh, just make sure it's a place where you have family to support you. She was 18 at the time, uh, 16 at the time. Um, make sure it's a place you can go where you have family to, to, to support you. You're not by yourself. And so uh, we have family in California. So she went and uh, she applied to, at that San Francisco Art Institute, uh, stayed at the school, but she was with some aunts of mine and a brother who also is involved in some art. And so at that institute, they also noticed the talent. They offered her at the end of her four week program, a scholarship for the top achievement student. And because their fees were 
ridiculously high. We couldn't even, they gave her like $30,000 a year, but we couldn't even afford the, the difference. So there you are, you've got this. So that is, imagine now she's also going through, I've gone through this, but I still can't even get into that university. It would have killed everything in her. So we continue to, to, to get her to know and appreciate and know that you, you still have this, you still have it. And it is because of that uh, scholarship award and that university that other universities then saw that, all right, we can accept this child into visual arts for a university. So that's what she's now studying in Mauritius, back into what she loves, visual arts. And, and it's, it's a story that has just panned out to, to, to benefit her. And we would have stopped. I mean, anyone would have said, no, forget it. You're, you're going to do something else. And so follow, just, just support them as much as you can. That's what we have done. I'm her biggest fan. I am her biggest supporter biggest fan, and so as you mentioned, looking for somebody who is already in the area to support your child, help them develop, teach them other skills, um, get them to, to have that confidence in themselves and just put in the work. And that's what she continues to do. Mama Paula, I even feel like buying a piece before I've even <laughs> seen the work. <laughs> like your pride, like really. Um, exudes oh, yeah. and, and that's just amazing we should all be our children's biggest fans yeah whatever yeah. they to pursue that they're doing right I, if you don't mind me asking that picture behind you is that yes, um, this, this is one of her pieces this is one of her pieces oh wow is that that so yeah now i think we are even in an advert here clearly <laughs> I want to, that should get it from anybody. Like, is there, because I, I've seen mostly, actually, most talents are uh, mo, uh, come from gene. And you'll okay. find that either the mother or the father had a similar talent, or you can trace it from somewhere. Is this, is there a link to either of you? Of you? Um, I, I wouldn't say painting, but from the, from the artist, art comes in many different ways. I make jewelry. I, uh, oh. I I make jewelry. I do interior. My sister does interior for for a living. I do it as a passion. Um, I know Rachel is is putting up her hand because I have also done some stuff with Rachel. <laughs> uh, so I've done that for some friends. Um, my my Paula is not just an artist. She's she's a poet. She writes. She's always written. It's sort of been her. She, she almost is like an artist in every way. The way she cooks the way she, how she, she writes. Uh, she, when, she, when she's going through stuff, she, her go-to is either paint or write. So my dad was a poet. Uh, my dad passed on uh, two years ago. My dad was a poet. So I, I always say it skipped me and went to her. <laughs> Passed a generation and went to her. So she's it, my mom. My mom also is does stuff with her hands. Um, so we we we. I, I would say there's some artistic gene in um, in the family. But painting, she's she's our painter. She's a family painter. <laughs> Yes. Oh, so I get that. So I, 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 I kind of get the, the link. I, you can trace it back somewhere, a few things here and there. And I think that's a bit easier to understand as a parent. So I just yes. wanted you, as we wrap up, to, to uh, how would you advise parents to go about identifying and nurturing gifts and talents of their children, especially those that are different from theirs? Because it's easy to identify creativity or artwork or sports or public speaking yes, if you yes. can trace it in your family. But in some families, they don't, and then they'll repair oh, ah, Now what, how, how can I assist you with this yes. art of you? So how would you speak to a parent who, to try to you know, encourage their children and be with them and support them through it? Pumla, you said it, you said it. Be with them, listen to them, um, pay attention to the little things. Pay attention to the little things that seem to be consistent. My son used to go outside and play his sports by himself. You would think there was a soccer match going on. He was the referee. He was the one kicking the ball by himself. He was the commentator. He was everything. You think there's a match every morning. 
So there are things that a child does consistently because it comes out of them. You know, you're not making them do it. So watch, be attentive to those small things. Spend time with your children because that's where you will also notice those things. And, and I say that very aware that we are busy working all that time. And it's very easy to, to think you're doing everything you can by providing and paying the fees and send, you know, taking, sending them to school. But there is that, there is that being involved with your child um, that gets you to notice uh, those areas that they have a keen interest in and that, that are different. The way they do things are different from the way you've seen things usually happen. So being open-minded, being very open-minded, don't, don't, don't expect things to always be the way you want them or even getting the kids to do what you want. Move away from that, which is a lot of what we usually do. Thank you so, thank you so much for joining us. And as I was saying, I think you have absolutely downplayed <laughs> genetics because I, I, yeah, I know your family. It's like art comes super easy for you guys. Your dad was an award-winning poet. I've seen your mom's artwork, your cousin, the, you know, the Miss Hominari. So I'm super sure oh, that, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So yeah. I think it's important once again, as you said, we need to be our children's biggest supporters. We need mm -hmm. to watch those small details that are consistently coming up. What I do know is my hobby is my job today. And it makes it so easy. People always ask me, don't you ever get tired? And yeah. I'm like, how? Oh, because I'm doing the thing that I love. So I can yeah. keep doing it Monday, Tuesday, 24 hours a day. Yes. Yeah. So yes. Um, look at your children and see the talents that they have. If you're able to build upon them, that's amazing. But would love to hear from you on all our social media platforms. Until next time, with love from Bumpler. Hello, Manuela here with great news from Bump Love. For the month of March, Bump Love is giving an opportunity to businesses that are led by women or that target women. And we're giving you advertising at a discounted rate on all of our social media platforms. Please call the number on your screen right now to find out more information. Until next time, bye-bye.